a forest bejeweled with lakes, where eternity seems to pause and reflect. Sometimes the sound of clashing horns can be heard. These beasts who challenge each other and then in fury or celebration dance upon the grass of the clearings also seem as if they've been here forever. These are the bison. Frozen for a moment in the morning chill, a herd passes through. It goes where instinct guides it, in the order it dictates. This individual and collective instinct has remained unchanged for thousands of years. Isolated males, following their species protocol, hang back or stand still, watching the retreating mass which is mainly composed of females and juveniles. The troop is on a quest to find a new start. Everything must start afresh. In fact, a drama took place a few days ago before the beginning of our tale. A large male walks alongside the herd. He's clearly unwelcome, but he doesn't want to be left behind. The herd disrupted by some kind of trauma, seems to hesitate. The large male with the unknown designs has moved on ahead and awaits the herd. European bison live in Poland, Belarus, and Russia, in the last remnants of the forest that once covered southern Scandinavia, the British Isles, and most of the continent from the Iberian Peninsula to Western Siberia. At its heart, shared by Poland and Belarus, lies Bielowieza forest. The retreat of a glacier 12,000 years ago made way for primeval forests which were ruled for millennia by nature and not man. From 1541, Bielowieza was the hunting reserve of the Tsars, which helped to protect the bison. The First World War led to thousands of animals being massacred and a great silence fell. Only the mourning notes of the wind around the tree trunks disturbed the silence of the deserted forest. Bielowieza has been a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve since 1976. It was registered on the World Humanity Heritage in 1979. It's part of the vast area planted with conifers and broad-leafed trees on level ground which stretches from the Baltic to the Black Sea, taking in the Carpathians. Many springs feed the streams. This abundance of water provides the vegetable cycle with its vigor. The abundance of dead wood nourishes a microfauna which is unique. Decomposition and digestion of dead matter permanently regenerate the forests. Bielowieza is home to 3,000 plant species, 200 bird species, and 62 species of mammal. Some of these, such as wolves, have been reintroduced by the poles. The last European buffalo died in 1919, a victim of poacher's bullets, but the species was reintroduced using animals from zoos as breeding stock. The big male walking ahead of the herd, and who has planted his thousand kilos of muscle on his column-like legs, illustrates perfectly the traits of his species. This is a powerful beast and the biggest in Europe. The females are smaller, rarely reaching weights more than 800 kilos. It's not their weight that increases their kudos, but their experience. 
The oldest and most battle-hardened female is the leader of the herd. But a drama has recently taken place. Their matriarch died a few days ago, and a younger female, her natural successor, has taken over. It's as if time stood still. A hoof strikes the ground with less authority than before. The males make their way along, their heads held low. This posture reveals the power suggested by their hump and their mane. They still don't know whether their new matriarch will be more accommodating than her predecessor. Already, they're preparing to test her. In the meantime, they continue to keep their distance. The new matriarch has a huge burden of responsibility. It's her job to guide the herd through the forest to find fresh and abundant pastures, to fend off wolf attacks, and rediscover old trails used by her ancestors. The herd consists of 12 to 20 beasts, mainly sisters, cousins, and nieces of the matriarch. Adolescents remain with the group until they reach sexual maturity, at which time they will leave the herd and wander the forest in search of females from other groups. Every beast must respect and obey the matriarch. She sits atop a pyramid of dominant and submissive relationships. She must instill discipline and control the ardors of the youngsters, see off any overzealous males from outside the herd, and watch over the cohesion of the group. The new matriarch must take on all these responsibilities. She is discovering her purpose in life. The rest of the herd watch her. Her ability to impose herself will have an impact on their security over the coming months. Everything seems calm and peaceful. But at each stage of the hierarchy, Everyone dreams of moving up a step, asserting themselves and dominating someone weaker. A head-to-head -head confrontation decides the outcome. The male who manages to hold his rival's head down close to the ground the longest is the victor. Tensions within the group are common. The herd needs to leave the clearing as they are vulnerable on open ground and head for the depths of the forest. The dominant female leads the way. This creates a diversion and the duelists calm down for a moment. Every member of the herd, when it reaches adulthood, will be challenged in this way by others who think they are stronger. By moving up in the hierarchy, the bison earn the right to be the first in the queue for food, especially if the grass is sparse or food is scarce because of competition with other herbivores. The forest is European bison's essential environment. This differentiates it from its American cousin, which is happy in the clearings, plains, and wide open spaces. Here, the bison are at one with the forest, which during the Ice Age was haunted by mammoths and woolly rhinoceros, which were its ancestors' contemporaries.
When summer comes, the amazing floral biodiversity produces a riot of colors. The bison, whose vision is limited to black and white and a mass of gray, can only discern the odors which thrill them. A great number of deer coexist with these brown giants of the prairies and undergrowth, where 600-year-old oak trees stand proud. In the natural order of things, bison are prey. The matriarch must never let her guard down. Lack of vigilance is a luxury that only predators can afford. In a monochrome world of grey, the bison nevertheless have a keen capacity for detecting movement. They have nothing to fear from this fox, but the slightest bound attracts their attention. Also, their eyes on each side of their head give them a 300-degree field of vision, which is increased by their protuberant eyeballs. Bison are hereditarily prone to cataracts, perhaps because their ancestors' bulging eyes were exposed to dust and pollen from the plants on which they grazed. Bison spend two or three hours in the morning grazing when the dew moistens the grass. They do the same in the evening when dusk refreshes the pastures. Abundant water is a boon for the bison who drink 50 liters a day each. Bialovietsa forest is irrigated by many watercourses which maintain the lushness of the meadows. A male bison can eat 40 to 60 kilos of grass a day. Buds and soft bark supplement their diet. Their jaws are always moving, masticating grass and the woody stems mixed in, or chewing food which they've already ingested. Bison are in fact bovidian ruminants, whose immobility, which could seem meditative, is in fact a period of calm before they regurgitate the cud. It is in clearings like this one that the matriarch's responsibilities are tested to their limits. She must effectively monitor the herd's coexistence with the other species with whom they compete for food for the good of the ecosystem. Additionally, she must ensure that the ground is not left bare. The grass must be given the chance to regenerate before the herd returns to graze here later under her guidance. With its long, muscular tongue and its mobile lips, the bison's muzzle is an impressive grass-cutting machine. And so time passes. Nothing has changed, not the habits nor the instincts inherited from the forebears who roamed Europe in their tens of thousands. During the afternoon, they often graze lying down. This position makes them vulnerable, and their full stomachs slow their reflexes. Their sheer size, however, has, since the disappearance of the larger predators, notably bears, been their best protection. While her charges graze, the matriarch must be doubly vigilant.
The most gratifying moments of a bison's life are almost certainly its mud or sand baths, both of which add an insulating layer into the fur. The animal's contortions soothe its itching. The sand crushes the insects and the mud asphyxiates them. This is also a social ritual, as these baths are often shared. After all, rolling about in the loose earth where another has previously wallowed allows them to establish their preeminence by leaving their smell. With a full belly, cleansed fur, and a hide warmed by the sun, the animals can finally relax and wait for the matriarch's signal that it's time to move on. At this point of the summer, the matriarch and her companions feel a mysterious urge from deep within. Mating season has arrived. With bellowings and agitation, the animal's behavior changes. The pheromones given off by the females are a signal that they're sexually receptive. The bulls are in heat and full of energy and aggression. Dust flies as the beasts attack the earth and clods of earth are churned up by plough-like horns. This is the ritual behavior through which the males express their violent desires. Their hooves strike the ground, while their glands leave their powerful scent, which can be detected by the nostrils of rivals who may be up to several hundred meters away. Rather than intimidating its rivals, the smell, alongside that of its generously sprinkled urine, actually attracts them. Instinct fills the adversary's spirit with rage, directed towards a single objective, conquering a female. The battle takes an unusual format. The rivals stand side by side, as if they were creating a wall. The idea is to prevent any movement in the direction of the female in question. This posturing can last for a very long time until the least resolute of the two beasts retreats. No fight, no injuries. The victor claims the spoils with no damage and does not even bother to chase off his adversary. But sometimes things are different. When a fight can't be avoided, it will be merciless. The injuries will be serious, perhaps even fatal. This is a twilight battle between two titans. The clash will end with the humiliation of the bull whose head has been held down, who's retreated if he's wounded, and sometimes by surrender. The more powerful of the two will pass on his genes, including the aggressive ones, to the next generation. How would the species survive otherwise if evolution didn't give the spoils to the strongest and most intelligent?
Once victory is assured, the victor integrates with the herd, which has calmly been watching the struggle. In order to identify the receptive female who will be his, the male once again relies on his sense of smell. He opens his nostrils to allow the pheromones to flow in. The subordinate female he sniffs first shows no promise. Then he takes an interest in the new and still young matriarch with quivering lips and gaping nostrils. He likes what he smells and inhales deeply his maw wide open. When it comes to reproduction, the male bison is no brute. Day after day, he follows the matriarch around, stays close to her, watches her. Then the moment arrives when he starts to lick her avidly. This is a sign that the love ritual has started to get serious. Coupling manoeuvres begin. The female doesn't offer herself up straight away. When one bison mounts another, it's a sign of dominance. She, who has just assumed her new rank, will not easily accept this. The male has to show a little patience. More hours of shadowing her, licking her and sniffing. He doesn't force himself upon her and shows consideration, saving his aggression for any male who may feel the need to impinge on their courtship. The other members of the herd stand and watch, knowing that in fertilizing her first, the male has confirmed the female's position as new matriarch. She is still young and will no doubt be fecund, unlike her predecessor who was too old to have babies. A strong male and a young matriarch. A perfect combination from which to produce a young heir displaying the finest characteristics of the bison species. And so the big male goes from female to female. When he's finished fertilizing his harem, he moves away. He has filled his evolutionary duty to establish himself and spread his genes. The time has now come to return to the depths of the forest and gather his strength. The young adult males wait at the edge of the forest. Their age brings with it great frustrations. They are already able to procreate, but how can they compete with the giant who has recently moved away or with other seasoned seducers who join the dance each time the females are in heat? Better to head off in search of adventure leave this herd where there's no future for them and attempt to find females who are available without having to fight a champion. While they await their opportunity, they sometimes join into bands of young bachelors. If they fail to find happiness elsewhere, they'll return to the herd that they came from. Stronger and more determined than before, they'll capture a few females and settle down with them elsewhere and have babies. Then they'll return to their single life. This is how groups expand and new family units are created. The mating season lasts from August to October. Those females who were impregnated by the males will give birth to their young in nine months, 
long enough for summer to arrive, winter to pass on by, and for the spring pastures to flower. Nine months is the time required to ensure that births happen at the best possible time. Moving on, the matriarch signals it's time to leave. Bison are a mobile species while not being migratory. Herds can cover around 30 kilometers a day. Autumn has seen off the tender grasses. They'll have to change their diet and leave the clearings. The matriarch guides her people to the forests where they'll find berries, seeds and edible roots. Bark torn from saplings will supplement their diet. The bark is rich in calorific nutrients, starch, glucose and calcium. This food will prepare them for the rigors of the coming winter. An adult bison consumes almost 4,000 kilos of grass, leaves and shrubs a year. Such an assault on the area's vegetation could deplete the biodiversity were it not for the fact, in the case of an adult male, for example, that each beast did not occupy a territory of between 2 and 10 square kilometers. Not only are the territories offered to B. Aylevets as bison not as vast as they ought to be, but two other species in particular feed on the same shoots and barks, roe deer and elk. Alongside these unwelcome guests are the red deer, who live in great herds in the forest. This autumn, a weary mother nature doesn't have enough resources to go round. Tensions are high. Instead of beating a hasty retreat, this stag stands his ground and remonstrates. The bison won't put up with any of that. In just a few moments, the situation spirals out of control. The stag eventually decided to round up his troop. But out of eyeshot, a bison's horn has wooted into form. The stricken animal's ordeal is just beginning.
the cries of a wounded animal could attract wolves. The bison's instinct tells them to swiftly kill anyone who could bring them to the attention of hungry predators. They would do the same thing among their own group. The flurry of violence was short-lived, but as a precaution, the dominant female leads her herd in flight. They must leave this place where blood has been spilt and where a pack of wolves is almost certainly heading. They must run as fast as possible, up to 45 kilometers an hour, leaping over ditches, climbing hillocks two meters high, and protecting their young by corralling them between the females at the front and the young males bringing up the rear. The matriarch's objective is to get her herd through the harshest season and hold on, desperately hold on, until next summer. But that summer may never come if she gets lost, if there are further confrontations and violence takes a hold. Winter has arrived. The landscape has completely changed. Whereas their brown coat blended in with the autumnal colours and their silhouette would become lost among the long summer grasses, now they stand out against the stark forest background. The deer too are adapting to the new season. Autumn has prepared them by covering their muscles with a layer of fat which insulates them against the cold. Their coat too changes, becoming thicker, warmer and waterproof. When the wintry squalls come, the bison seek the windbreaks offered by the conifer groves. The resources of this forest, inhabited by 480 bison, should only be able to sustain 250. When a harsh winter causes food to become scarce, the weakest become vulnerable, condemned by evolution. They will die, or rather they should die. Dealing with the cold is one thing. Dealing with hunger on top of it is virtually impossible. There are still acorns, grasses and dried plants buried beneath 40 centimetres of snow, but how can the weaker beasts get to them? They have instead to content themselves with hard wooden twigs and increasingly precious bark. Bison's tracks create furrows in the snow as they go back and forth in search of food. This ploughing is a boon for some as it removes the snowy covering from the dens of voles, mice and moles. For small predators like foxes, this provides a new hunting ground. In winter, it is snow that makes animals vulnerable, as it slows and limits their movement. The matriarch's first duty is to protect the herd from its enemies. 
the huge and powerful bison has few which can match it for size. However, a pack of wolves working as a team can kill the youngest and less mobile individuals. So it's vital that not one bison becomes isolated. That's why the herd has to stand together and create a compact mass. Some of them, sick or unaware of the danger, sometimes escape the dominant female's watchful eye. A youngster unwittingly walks into the jaws of death. Tragedy befalls the weak. The cold has got the better of an errant youngster. The wolves would happily give free rein to their good fortune were it not for the incredible scene taking place before us. Unaware that his brother is dead, one of his fellows approaches. For several hours, the bison have been vainly trying to warm up the one they seek to awaken. The wolves become impatient. The bison eventually move away. The pack approaches. The feast can begin. but they've underestimated the obstinacy of the bison who come charging back. The wolves are reluctant to retreat. This is ill-advised as a bison's horn could perforate their belly or chest. The bison will return several times to watch over their companion, probably not realizing that his last breath has left him. Bison, like other prey animals, have an innate sense of danger. This dates back to the time when they had to contend with saber-toothed tigers, cave bears, and human predators. Solidarity is one of the ways that evolution has allowed them to avoid their enemies. That's why the dead youngster is watched over as if he were alive and needed protection. Generations ago, European bison faced fearsome predators. They've disappeared while the bison have survived. They know how to deal with the cold, wolves and hunger. Ironically though, their survival is due to a predator who itself almost wiped them out. Man. In the 1920s, there were 60 bison living in zoos and nature reserves, and none living in the wild. Starting with a handful of animals whose captivity saved them from war, Scientists rebuilt the species and reintroduced it to the place where it had lived, Bielowieza. Winter has taken over the forest. Every animal adapts in its own way. Where humans admire this beauty, bison see dead grass, depleted bark, privation. The matriarch has scented something unusual and led the herd towards the source of the odor. Feast is on offer. The bison rush towards the unexpected, abundant and delicious food. Bison are still reliant on man, as he is the one who comes to their aid. Every winter, the Biosphere Reserve's employees distribute mangers along the routes that the herds use. 
Without this extra food, especially taking into account the reserves over population, the youngest bison would almost certainly not survive. Bialovietz's guardian angels are warping natural selection for bison, as well as the other creatures whose survival they are aiding, red deer, roe deer and wild boar. The world has entered the era which the scientists call the anthropogenic age, the age of man, master of the destiny of other species. It's in this way that the boars, all skin and bone, can rush to the mangers and eat their fill. In their weakened state, they would be ideal prey for wolves, but the stature of the reinvigorated bison keeps these at bay. The days leading up to spring are the final sprint in the race against time. Just a few more days, and everyone's survival will be guaranteed, for a few more weeks at least. It's not long before the ground starts to thaw and the sun warms the buried seeds. Soon the forest is full of bitter sweet smells. The buds swell on their branches. Grass grows on the soil engorged by water from melting snow. A kind of euphoria grips the forest. The birds sing, the amphibians croak, celebrating the return of the season of plenty. Bielovietsa, one of Europe's finest treasures, could receive an influx of visitors, but the underdeveloped infrastructure limits the capacity for tourism, so the reserve remains the domain of wild animals. Sap swells the branches. The bark of the willow and lime trees is a real treat for the bison. The landscape becomes green once more. The bison regain the weight that the winter stripped from them. The new matriarch has successfully guided her tribe through the seasons. She's gained the respect of her people. No one will challenge her authority. Bison are occasional gardeners. They trim the long grass and so stimulate the growth of shorter grass which the sunlight can reach more easily, and are a treat for roe deer, wild boar, hare, and other herbivores. These landscapers help prevent the growth of brambles and weeds, stop bushes getting out of control, and prevent the creation of impenetrable hedges. Their manure enriches the soil. Their hooves get rid of mosses which choke other plants. When they churn up the soil, their hooves and horns unearth seeds, which are just begging to germinate. Seeds stuck in their hooves are carried elsewhere. In this way, they are doing their bit for biodiversity. The abundance of food means that they do not deplete the soil. They only graze on the top part of the grasses. Their behavior stimulates regrowth and awakes new dormant seeds in between the blades of grass. Bison are what is known by researchers here as an umbrella species, meaning that in protecting it, man is protecting an entire ecosystem. 
Without that, there wouldn't be any of these old dead trees rotting on the ground, feeding protozoa, fungi, lichens, plants, batrachians, and insects. Nature is rediscovering its dynamism. The dominant female still has a problem to resolve. Her charges need salts and micronutrients essential to their metabolism, especially sodium and calcium. The deer can find plants covered with salt traces, and that's enough for them. But the bison need a more significant supply. The dominant female soon finds posts smeared with the precious minerals. Like the winter mangers, these poles of plenty are put here by the reserve's employees. The bison are not the only ones enjoying them. The reason that salt is so vital to bison, especially the females at this time of year, is that their bodies need it. Deep inside them, something incredible is preparing to happen. Sated with salt and calcium, the dominant female moves away from the herd. There is only one thing that could possibly impel her to leave them to their own devices. After walking for several kilometers, she finds the peaceful, fern-lined clearing she was looking for. A river refreshes the air. This is where she will give birth. Twenty kilos of blood, bone and breath to be pushed out. 20 kilos of flesh to be added to the world's flesh, 20 kilos of suffering and fulfillment. The young bison is born and soon stands up. This is essential for prey beasts to be able to get up without delay so as not to give predators the time to pounce. After a few weeks, when he's steadier on his legs, his mother takes him towards the waiting herd. The young bison is a hit with his audience. He has long legs, a straight back, and no hump or horns. To spare him from the overbearing and potentially brutal attentions of his companions, his mother keeps him away from the adults. However, the youngster has just one idea in mind, to rush to meet his fellows and face the unknown. In the first few months of his life, he suckles from his mother more than 10 times a day. Weaning starts at two months, and the young bison start to nibble at spring grass and buds on the twigs and branches. The matriarch will provide the herd with several members until she reaches the age of 17. Every time, her baby will need her attention for an entire year. She will share herself between her calf and her herd until death or arrival unseats her. In the meantime, she will have accomplished the mission given to her by her genes and instincts. She will have served and guided her people through the seasons towards an opportunity unparalleled in the wilderness of nature, survival. <laughs>